Look, guys, you can't expect new fancy videos every night. I mean, that would be ridiculous. But we're doing one tonight. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I thought I would do is work on... I'm, I'm out here getting some measurements on my, um, my front assembly here. So this was all done, I believe. When did I do this? I did this 2020, spring 2020, um, winter 2020, I think. So anyway, uh, my upright assembly with the spindle. And obviously, you know, my steering arm and my tie rod. And then over here, I have my hubs. So with my brake rotor, fancy spacer, and then these hubs that I buy kind of off the shelf from Hyper Racing. But I was out here getting some measurements because I'm looking at my scrub radius. So I thought I'd do a quick talk about scrub radius on the car. So what scrub radius is, is kind of, it's where these two kind of like magic lines meet and how far apart they are and how they kind of interact with each other. So the two magic lines are, uh, the first one is my hub face, which is where my uh, wheel bolts onto. So my wheels are zero offset, meaning my wheels are, like my wheel is eight inches wide and it has a zero offset. So that means the center of the wheel, like when it bolts on, it is right at four inches in from the outside, four inches in from the inside. So it's zero offset. So that means the center of my wheel is right here on my hub face. So that is one line is my hub face wheel, right? And the next line is uh, over here, and it is this kind of magic line that goes from my upper ball joint down to my ball, my lower ball joint and all the way down to the ground. So the upper and lower ball joint make a line, and wherever that would hit down here on my paper somewhere uh, would be you know, somewhere about this point here. And then I have my hub face, which is the center of my tire when it's on the ground, and that's about that point there. And I know that that distance is just under three inches. is like 2.8 or 2.9 inches, something like that. So uh, that is actually, especially for a car this size and with that much sticky tire on the ground, that's a, kind of a lot. Uh, what scrub radius does is you can kind of picture like as you turn the steering wheel, the whole um, kind of knuckle assembly rotates and pivots on your upper and lower ball joint. So this whole thing is swinging. Side to, is swinging. So my tire contact patch right there at the center um, is having to kind of like be drug around that pivot point. And so right now that moment arm is, you know, almost three inches long. So I'm going to decrease that a little bit. And I'm going to do that um, by changing the angle of my upper and lower ball joint. So I'm going to change this thing and actually make it a little bit more upright and slide it in a little bit. So uh, it seems like making it more upright makes it harder and it does. But I want to make it more upright because I have one other issue with my front assembly. And that is if we look at my spindle angle, you know, my spindle is roughly horizontal right now, um, ish, the, the way that the suspension is sitting. And then I have this kind of angle for my upper and lower ball joint. So those two lines aren't perpendicular, right? If they were perpendicular, this would be perfectly vertical. This would be perfectly horizontal. Um, and wherever they were living when that's assembled. They're obviously not that. There is an angle difference between that line and my, my horizontal line here. Because of this difference in angle, or I mean, because of that angle, uh, it means that when I turn the wheel, so this thing isn't perfectly vertical, it's tilted back a little bit. So you're gonna have to kind of visualize this with me. So as I turn the wheel to go right, which means that this whole assembly would come up and forwards, this spindle, because it's tilted back, actually comes picks up a little bit. So this whole thing sits back a little bit and picks up. So that actually picks the tire, like you, you decrease the weight on the tire as you actually turn the wheel. And as you turn left coming in, it actually pushes the tire down. So that's good because it causes some intentional weight jacking, which helps with the solid rear axle in the back of the car. But right now we have a lot, and I think we actually have too much. So I think by having uh, slightly less weight jacking and slightly less scrub radius, that's going to make for better steering feel for the driver and also make the car a little bit easier to drive because right now the steering is really heavy. And since we don't have a powered steering rack, you know, everything's all manual. So I just want to make sure that we kind of get through a long day uh, at a pro solar or whatnot um, and still have kind of fresh arms by the end of the day. So anyway, uh, that will help with steering feel, but it will also help with, I think, making sure that the contact patch stays happy, right? That's all we care about is we want the tire to be happy with the ground. Now we run bias ply tires, not radial tires. 
So the bias plate tires are uh, a little bit more floppy um, than radials. They don't really maintain their structure. So they want to roll on the rim, like they'll slide side to side. And you can actually look at pictures. Um, for example, Perry Bennett just released on his Auto X Picks site, uh, which Perry, you're awesome. Uh, a bunch of pictures and it shows how much the tire distorts on the rim, especially on, on these cars that have uh, a pretty substantial tire contact patch and on an eight inch wide rim, um, the car really will work those tires. Lot, lots of mechanical grip. And then we want to get as much as we can out of the tires. So anyway, got to get a couple more measurements so I can continue drawing stuff on the computer. But uh, just thought I'd shoot one more video for you guys real quick. Have a good night. Catch you later.